Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com and we are continuing the sketch and tune tutorials and today we're going to be highlighting uh, sketch, sketch style tags. Say that five times fast. Uh, so if you see in my scene here uh, that if you just go ahead and go to effect and apply a sketch and tune, that will automatically just apply strokes to your whole entire scene. So what we're going to be doing is going beyond just this default setting because a lot of people don't really explore beyond what this is. It's and like I said, I've said this before, sketching tunes are very deep and uh, it can be hard to kind of wrap your brain around. So what sketch style tags do, uh, and I'm just going to be struggling just trying to say sketch style tags. Uh, what, what they do is basically act like material tags where you can apply different materials to individual objects. You can use sketch style tags to apply different uh, sketch materials to individual uh, objects. So that's what we're going over today. Sketch style tags. So let's just go into this. Alright, so this is the scene we're going to be working with and it's just a cloner with some planes and uh, children of those planes are just some splines that are making up the features on the face of these dollar bills here. Uh, so what I have here is just some uh, cell shader materials. Uh, that are applied so we have a little bit of shading if I hit render here or turn on interactive render region so I got a shadow and just a little bit of shading on that bill wrapper here uh, and if you don't know much about cell shader I have a tutorial about it I'll link in the in, in this tutorial and so what we're going to be doing is applying sketch lines or outlines to these objects to create some line art style stuff so to do that uh, and I'm sure a lot of people are used to just, you know, going into effect, enabling sketch and tune. And then if I hit render, you can see that by default, it applies a sketch material to your materials menu down here. And it just applies a stroke to all of your objects globally. So what you're going to do is in these render settings here, these are kind of kind of control the global settings here. But you can also work with just applying different stroke materials to different objects. So what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to turn off this default visible and I'm just going to get rid of it because that's the sketch material that's being applied globally to all of the objects in our scene. So I'm just going to clear that out and if I turn on interactive render region here you can see that that removes all those strokes that that sketch tag material uh, by being the default visible over the entire scene we just got rid of that. So we're done in this tab right here. We're going to go to render and one thing I like to do is turn on this resolution independent. Now what that's going to do is maintain the same stroke thickness no matter what resolution you're working at or no matter no matter how zoomed in you are to an object. It's just going to keep the resolution or the thickness of the stroke consistent. If you had it off, you can zoom out of your scene and actually your thickness could go down or go up if you zoom in. So this just keeps the uh, thickness uh, of your stroke uh, the same throughout and consistent. So I just like to keep that on uh, or turn that on because by default it's off. Uh, and then we go to multipass and there's some multipass options here. I'm just going to deal with that. Uh, background color, this is where you actually change the background color and by default it's white but since I have a plane in my scene that kind of is taking up the entire background here already, I don't need a background so I'm just going to turn that off. And then I'm also going to uh, turn off shading here. Now if I go to interactive render region here, <coughs> by default it's set to quantize. Uh, and if you just turn this off, it's just going to use the materials that you have already set. So I just like to turn that off uh, unless you want to deal with any of these kind of things. You can say a custom color that will apply uh, to your whole entire scene but again since we don't have the sketch tag style applied to everything let me actually just put that back on there you can see that we now just applied a white color to everything so if you want to do some like monochromatic stuff this is very handy because then you can just change the color of everything throughout your entire scene uh, but again i'm just going to turn that off and actually I'll, I'll keep that sketch tag on to just kind of go over the editor display here and you can see that uh, I use interactive render region to actually see what the rendered images is going to look like and also because you don't see the strokes 
on any of your objects unless you turn on the show lines here and full redraw just kind of refreshes in the scene faster uh, and using 3d lines is faster than 2d lines but again you can see that that's not entirely accurate because we're losing the lines on our dollar bills here so it does help uh, see a little bit of the lines in your scene but depending on I think it's because there's a cloner uh, it doesn't allow you to see the lines that are produced with cloner objects uh, but you can see once I turn the cloner off you can see the dollar bill and every all the strokes are on it so that's kind of cool just to see the lines in your uh, viewport uh, so I'm just gonna uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just remove that sketch material remove all the sketch objects off there turn on interactive render region we're starting fresh so what we want to do and what we want to what you want to learn how to do is using sketch style tags uh, to apply different sketch materials to individual objects so we're just gonna start very easy and what we're gonna do is apply a green stroke to the dollar bills and a blue stroke to this little bill wrapper here so the first thing I'm going to do is take this default material that was already created and just rename it to uh, dollar and then we'll just give this uh, we'll enable strokes <clears throat> and we'll go and change the color uh, to like a green kind of thing but you can see that we actually need to apply this to our objects and to do that we'll just go and drag and drop this onto our dollar object here and you'll see that that will apply a sketch style tag and you'll notice that you don't see this little sketch icon it's actually just a, a see-through cube and that's just gonna act as it's gonna act the same way as like your texture tag only it's just represented with this little cube icon and you'll see that by default it has all these line types checked on and I think that's good I think we need some overlaps uh, and some outlines, I believe, to just kind of close some of those gaps in there, I think. Uh, let's see. Intersections. Does that do it? Anyways. So what we need to do is go ahead and change the color of the dollar bills here. Or the stroke on the dollar bills. And what we're going to do for that is go to our... We're going to turn off uh, filter strokes. I think that's what's causing that issue. Yep, there we go. That's a little gotcha as well, uh, that this filter stroke kind of just filters out strokes that overlap that are small. So if you're not seeing small strokes, see if that fixes it. And that should bring it back a lot of your smaller strokes. So you can see I, that even got me <laughs> messing around with all this stuff. So I was kind of clicking around in here trying to see if anything worked. Uh, and nothing was going. Uh, just make sure if there's small, especially small strokes, to go in there in the strokes option and just turn off the filter strokes altogether. So that's a little gotcha. I'm glad that I ran into that because I'm sure you'll run into that too. So cool. Uh, so again, we'll go back to changing the color of our stroke and we'll just go to this color option and we'll just grab like a darker green here. And the nice thing about this is with interactive render region on, we can see that live update and say like, all right, that looks good. That's a good color of green. Uh, and then you can, if you want to, you can change the thickness as well. Uh, but I actually like a thickness of two, that, that works fine. So I'm just gonna close that. And so that is being applied to this dollar here. It will also apply to everything below it as well. Uh, you'll notice if I have a say a cone as a child let's just move it over here and let's just let the refresh go uh, you'll see that it should apply to this pyramid as well I think because the cloner objects off yep there we go the cloner object kind of screws with stuff a little bit but you'll notice that if you have an object, the child of an object with a sketch style tag onto it, that'll also apply it on uh, all these options onto that object as well. Now, what if you wanted to apply a different material to or, or just remove lines altogether? You can see we have this weird stuff going on with because the folds is enabled. So to be able to apply a separate tag 
or style, we just got to put a separate tag that'll overwrite the parent uh, sketch tag. So now we can go on this individual uh, cone object, turn off the folds, and I think if we turn off some of these other things, that'll get rid of that weird uh, stuff going on at the top. So that is a way to isolate uh, objects underneath uh, parents here. So, so that's just demonstrating that we just use a separate tag that'll overwrite the parent tag, and that's how we can get around uh, kind of applying individual uh, types of lines to children. So let's get rid of that. So again, since we have a sketch style tag that's a parent, it's also applying to everything below it, all of the children. So if we want to see the splines being, uh, being stroked as well, we'll just go and turn on the splines option. So that's one way to do it. You can see our splines show up. Another way to do it is if you just have splines that aren't children of an object, say they're just out floating in space, what you can also do, and this is really cool, is just apply the sketch material directly onto the spline. And the sketch style tag will actually enable splines by default. So actually look at the object you applied it to, and if it's a spline, it'll just automatically check on that splines uh, option, which is really cool and handy. You know, it skips a little step for you. Uh, but for us, we just have everything as a children, so we'll just turn on splines, and there we go. You can see that these edges are kind of grunged up right now, and this is due to a uh, hidden call here. Now, what hidden call is, is the stroke width kind of like intersects with geometry. So you can think of almost as this like a 3D stroke that is just intersecting with uh, the plane here. So to get rid of that, we change this hidden call from self to project. And you'll see that we should get rid of that grunginess. So that just got rid of everything. And it's now ignoring that that stroke is intersecting the geometry, even though our actual splines aren't intersecting the geometry. They're like right on top of it with a little bit of space. Uh, so you can actually see that here is my spline. So you can you can clearly see that there's no intersecting of geometry, but due to that call, we actually need to make sure that that's on, so it's not kind of detecting that. Oh, the the stroke width is is thick enough that if the stroke was an actual tube in our scene, it would be intersecting it. So that can give you some trouble. So just keep that in mind. Hidden call project. That'll get rid of some uh, grunginess if you have a spline next to or close to another object. Okay, so next thing we want to do is go ahead and apply a separate material, a sketch stroke, to this blue object right here, the, the, uh, the dollar wrapper here. What is that? That's a dollar wrapper. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to go command click and drag and just duplicate our sketch material that's already in there and we'll change this to uh, wrapper and we'll just again drag and drop and apply that to our plane and again this will apply a sketch style tag that the default visible is now that wrapper uh, material you'll see that that applied our green stroke to that object but what we want to do is actually make that uh, a bluish kind of material and just kind of darken that a bit and see what looks good. That update, there we go. So we got this nice dark blue material in there to match our blue wrapper there. So then since we have our separate tag, we have all these separate options. Uh, we can do overlaps, intersections, we can turn off creases if we don't want that crease right there. Just wait for it to update. So then we have our separate style tag on our separate object here. So again, you can also play around with different types of, so if you have a whole bunch of uh, stroke materials in here, if you wanted to change it out, you wouldn't have to delete this and get rid of, delete this tag and get rid of all the settings you set. If you want to change just the, the uh, if you, if, like I said, if you have a bunch of different sketch materials here, so let's make this like a hot pink one, right? 
and we'll just do this wrapper two. So if we want to maintain all of our stroke, our, all of our line types and all the other stuff, we, we just want to see like, oh, well, what would this look like with this sketch material? We can just do uh, replace the default visible with this new one, and it'll maintain all of our other options, and just change that stroke and change all of the settings to match the style in our sketch material here. All right, so that is basically the, the very basic surface of sketch style tags and how you can isolate individual objects, apply sketch tags to it. And so now since we have uh, a separate material, we can actually go and change the thickness and that'll just be isolated to whatever this sketch style tag is applied to. So we can actually go in here and say we wanted to keep this sketch material tag on the dollar bill, but we wanted to apply this hot pink to all of our uh, spline objects here and just grab all the splines right click and just go apply and then again this will apply that hot pink to all those materials and again we have to turn off the hidden call and turn it to project and we should have nice thick hot pink lines on our dollar bill and that's basically how a sketch tag a sketch style tag works uh, and I will also link in the in my tutorial post all of the previous uh, sketch and tune tutorials I did uh, I covered sketch style tags a little bit in my overview of the sketch and tune uh, to create line art but there's a lot here uh, to go over uh, you know, there's a lot to understand about sketch style tags and how you can use them to kind of isolate objects and apply specific strokes, uh, stroke materials to uh, objects. So again, it's as easy as just dragging whatever material, sketch material you want into the sketch style tags. Boom, it'll update. And there you go. That's, that's sketch style tags. Be friends with it because it's really awesome. They're, they're really handy. So if you have any questions, as always, post them in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye guys.